Well, hello and Happy New Year to you all. Um, just making a quick video, really just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're going to be looking at with QB Ray as we move into 2023. I've got some really quite big plans of things that I'd really like to do with it. And, you know, I don't want to overpromise. not necessarily entirely sure how far we'll get with those, but we'll see. One of the things that particularly I want to explore is the issue of performance. So QB Ray, as we've seen it so far in all over, over the series, is well, very slow, to put it charitably, I think. <laughs> it's definitely not the fastest ray tracer out there. Now, I have been, and I, well, I've alluded previously to the fact that I have a private development version of QB Ray because I work several episodes ahead of where we are with the series. And one of the things that I have been working on over the last few weeks, particularly, is to focus on addressing these performance issues. And my private version is considerably faster uh, by about a factor of 10 compared to the uh, version that's currently available on the GitHub repository. Uh, in principle, part, mostly perhaps because it's uh, multi-threaded, but also because I've made uh, some fairly significant efficiency improvements, shall we say, to the rest of the code and to the algorithm. So one thing, let's just have a quick look at that and let's just have a look at what I mean by means of comparison. So let's uh, just go to our terminal window. So here we are. So this is the public version as we've been developing uh, throughout the series so far. And I'm just going to run that now. And we'll let that run. I'll bring the window over so we can see the result when it's ready. Now, this is rendering the example image that I put together before that has the mirrored walls and the uh, quantitative spray uh, can. Um, so I think that makes quite an interesting test because it actually, as you can see, does take quite a long time to render. Yes, <laughs> I'm actually surprised that uh, more of you haven't brought up the issue of how slow this is um, before now. A couple of people have asked me about it, but that's all. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is very much my approach to how we do things. You know, it, it to me, it's always felt more important to cover the real fundamentals of ray tracing and how ray tracing works in the general sense before spending too much time thinking about making it efficient and everything else. And you know, as I've also said, QB Ray is something I'm developing very much for my own use. It has a particular application, you know, for me in my head, and that very much shapes how I write it. It's written in such a way as to be uh, very appropriate with that application in mind. So anyway, let's see, as we're getting towards the end, bum, 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 bum. Yep. <laughs> sometimes I forget how slow this version actually is, but we're nearly there. So let's have a look, coming up to 720, and there we are. So this is the image that we saw before. Uh, we see that took, on that particular run, 86.3 seconds to render, um, which I personally don't think is all that bad. But then, you know, I got into ray tracing back in the days when an image like this would probably have taken, on the first PC I had, maybe a couple of days to render at this resolution. So to me, I think 86 seconds to render that ain't that bad. But, of course, we know that we can do a lot better. And to prove that, let's uh, skip over and have a look at how the development version that I have renders, how quickly the development version renders the same scene. So let's have a look at that now. Let me just go to the right folder. There we are. Okay, so uh, I'm now going to run the development version. This has a slightly different feature set to the uh, public version at the moment. So one thing it has is command line uh, syntax, as you can see here. Max level, it's going to do a gamma correction using a gamma value of 0 0.8, uh, which just helps produce a, uh, a better looking image. And let's see. So as you can see, we can see the image being rendered, and you can immediately see that it is a lot faster than the public version. Okay, so there we go, 9.3 seconds to render exactly the same scene. Now you will notice it does look a little bit different. The colors are a bit brighter and everything. And that is because it does gamma correction. That is again, something I haven't got around to talking about for the uh, version actually that's available publicly. But there we go. So that is one thing that I'm gonna be talking about in 2023. I'm gonna cover everything that we need to do to the version of code that is on the GitHub repository to make it run as fast as this one. Okay, so I think that's pretty exciting. Now, the other thing that I'm keen to talk about is um, bounding boxes. 
So bounding boxes are one of perhaps the most basic ways of making ray tracing go faster. Because one of the reasons ray tracing is slow is because of the computational uh, load that comes from having to test for intersections. That's actually the number one thing that makes ray tracing slow is testing for intersections. I've heard people talk about memory and optimizing for cache hits and that kind of thing. And, you know, yeah, okay, that does always make a difference. But in most cases, I think compared to the time it takes to test for an intersection, I think the improvement from that sort of angle is going to be pretty small. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe that's something we can look at later, but, but I don't think that's going to lead to a big improvement. The number one improvement in ray tracing efficiency is going to come from minimizing the number of times you have to test for an intersection. And bounding boxes are the simplest, perhaps, I think. Yeah, the simplest way of actually achieving that. And the idea is, is you put any object over a certain complexity inside a bounding box, and then you test for an intersection with the bounding box before you test with the intersection with the object inside it. The logic being that testing the bounding box intersection is a lot more efficient than testing for an intersection with a more complex object. And so essentially you can divvy your scene up into, into different things. So that's something I want to look at. And I will do that in combination with uh, looking at composite shapes, which is uh, something that I want. It's quite important for modeling and making more complicated looking scenes. And in fact, it's the basis of the uh, Christmas tree that I made for the Christmas special. So if you look at the animation here, this actually rather shows rather nicely how that Christmas tree was constructed. We have the tree itself and then we have the bounding box for each of the rings, the horizontal rings that uh, construct the trees you can see here shown in orange and we can zoom in on that and we see that each ring is made of branches each with its own bounding box. Each branch is composed of clusters again with their own bounding boxes and each cluster is composed of segments and each segment contains a leaf or multiple leaf objects. And that is how that Christmas tree was constructed. A total of 38,400 leaves uh, constructed relatively easily by being able to combine things together in that particular way. So that is something else that I want to go and look at. That will probably be the next episode and then probably, I'm not promising, probably we'll go on to look at performance after that. So in the bigger picture, uh, particularly in terms of performance, we need to look at things like octree space division and things like that. That's sort of taking bounding boxes, if you like, to the next level. And then there's, there's all sorts of other ways that we can talk about improving performance. But the one thing I'm actually really interested to talk about is photorealism. And in particular, why ray tracing doesn't produce photorealistic images in the first place. I think that's important to look at. I know lots of other people just go on and talk about path tracing and stuff, but I think it's more interesting and more um, informative to think about why really we might want to look at path tracing or other techniques before jumping in and actually doing it. Path tracing is a pretty straightforward algorithm anyway, so uh, at least in its naive form, so that's no big deal. And so I want to look at that, and I'm thinking that that might form a second series in parallel with the ray tracing series. I'm not sure at the moment. No, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm just thinking we're already, what, 22, 23 episodes? <laughs> this is quite a long series now, and maybe it's time to uh, break that apart to, you know, once we've addressed the performance issues and, and simple bounding boxes, maybe it's time to bring this series to a close and then move on to a new series focusing on photorealism. I'm not sure at the moment. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how that plays out in 23. So either way, I think it's going to be a very interesting year. I'm super excited with the ideas I have for the content that I'm going to make. I really hope you are too. If this is your first video scene coming to my channel now, I hope perhaps that uh, something of what I've said will sound interesting to you and you'll be tempted to hit that uh, like button and to subscribe if you haven't done so already. That would be much appreciated. And uh, yes, and well, as I said, with the Christmas special, I am aware that, you know, Quantitative Bytes isn't meant to be a channel devoted only to ray tracing, and I do intend to go back to the more general scientific computing stuff. And there will be a tie-in to that with the ray tracing. So ray tracing has specific applications in scientific computing and in the world of medicine, actually, so do keep an eye out for that. So the, there is a bigger plan in my head. <laughs> Just have to trust me on that one, I think. <laughs> I'll say more later. Nearer, nearer the time. But anyway, I really just wanted to wish you all a Happy New Year, to say a little bit about some of the exciting content that's coming up, and say that I'm really looking forward 
to seeing you in all the videos that are to come throughout 2023. And thank you very much to everyone for all your support and uh, wonderful comments throughout 2022 as well. Much appreciated. Thanks. Anyway, that's enough from me for now. I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.